Today on Political Access, we're going to talk about Tucker Carlson and the January 6th story. There'll be a link down below if you want to skip ahead to it. But first, I want to talk a little bit about James L. Buckley. And if you've been following this channel for a while, you know one of my passions is records or streaks. And I'm fascinated by longevity. So James Buckley was a U.S. Senator from New York, and he turned 100 years old yesterday. So that's a massive milestone. I'm into that kind of thing. I find it to be fascinating. Now, Buckley does have his own unique story, and as this article mentions, he did serve in all three branches of government. You can read about it here. We can go over to his Wikipedia page, and he did serve one term in the U.S. Senate, but he also served as a federal judge from the D.C. Circuit. So this isn't just some guy who was appointed and only served for a couple of months. I think his story is more interesting than some others, and I don't want to spend too much time on his background, but if you go back to 1970, that's the election he was elected in New York. He was actually on the conservative party ticket, so he would probably be considered a Republican. But at that time, there was a split, and he was essentially able to win third party with a plurality of the vote, just under 39%. Six years later, he was defeated in his re-election bid, running as a Republican this time, and he lost by over 10%. So one term for Buckley, and I'm sure it's impressive in other ways, but my own personal interest is on his longevity. So this gives me another opportunity to plug my own blog, I have the 100 longest-lived U.S. Senators on this list, and Buckley is currently in fourth place. Only three other Senators have made it to age 100, and only two of those were actually elected. So Buckley is in very exclusive company, and it hasn't happened since Strom Thurmond did it in 2003. So if he lives another two years, he'll become the oldest ever. And of course, I have the 100 oldest on this entire list. Some of these Senators were appointed and not elected, so I have an addendum. I usually get around to updating this about twice a year. So some people don't care about this stuff at all. I understand that. But for me, I've always been interested in who's lived the longest, who's served the longest, etc. And if this is your kind of thing, there will be a link down below in the description. But I also have the 100 longest lived U.S. representatives. There's a lot more representatives. So naturally, there's going to be more that made it to 100. But still a very tough thing to do. And then I also have the same thing for the governors. I'm not going to go into too much detail on this. But if you're interested in this... Definitely take a look. I find it to be fascinating, but I understand if you don't care. So let's move on to the Tucker Carlson story. It's been all over the news in recent weeks about how Kevin McCarthy has given Tucker Carlson exclusive access to basically all of the January 6th video. And then naturally, there's the ensuing outrage from the Democrats. They could have released it all when they controlled the House, and a lot of this could have come to light from the January 6th committee, but it didn't. So it is weird that McCarthy would give it to Tucker Carlson. I would much rather have everyone have access to it. But as far as additional thoughts on this, well, usually with politics, I think everybody is a hypocrite. And I think there's a lot of that in this situation. I think if the roles were reversed, people would change their tune. And that's a shame, but that's usually how it goes. But my other takeaway from this is, if there's additional video that does not show it to be as violent as it was made out to be by the mainstream media, then show it. So what? Now, Carlson might use it to present a misleading narrative overall, but at the same time, the Democrats and the mainstream media went so far in the other direction to act like this was the most catastrophic, violent thing of all time. They went all the way in one direction, and if Tucker Carlson ends up going all the way in another direction, then just leave it up to the American people. Now, I don't think Carlson's saying nothing bad happened on that day. Everybody already saw how bad it got, but there's a chance that narrative has been overblown. And if there were some more peaceful aspects or some conflicting video that might not show it as destructive as it was made out to be, I still think that side should be seen. You could show how bad it got, and you could also show the other side of it. And if some of the video makes it more complicated with what the Capitol Police did, then you gotta show that too. Sometimes situations are convoluted, and everything isn't so neat and easy to explain sometimes. So in this situation, I'm in favor of video being released. Just showing what actually happened, all that does is shine more light on the situation. And just like with police body cams, that's generally going to be a good thing. It's going to give you access to more of the situation. To me, that doesn't seem unreasonable. I don't think it's going to change the underlying point of the bad things that happened, but there might be a little bit more to it than what we're led to believe. But for me, the broader issue in this is everybody does want to be a victim. And the Democrats, they certainly melt that for every penny it's worth. The Republicans would have loved to have something like this happen four years earlier with Hillary Clinton supporters showing up at the Capitol. Then there would have been a complete about face from both sides. Republicans would have been victims, but they probably would have went way too far with it. And the Democrats in that situation, they would want to downplay a lot of it. 
they would want to say it's mostly peaceful, and they would object to only showing the worst parts of it. Now, I agree showing the worst parts are completely relevant, but if there's other sides to it, I want to know those as well. So the broader victim culture, I think, is at play, and Democrats had a monopoly on being the victims, Trump supporters being the aggressors. So I think the Democrats, most of the media, they do fear if additional video is shown, they will at least undercut the Democrats being the victims a little bit. And for some reason, it's completely unacceptable if the other side could possibly be a victim in any way. That I don't like. I don't think you have to be 100% of a victim. Maybe sometimes you're only 70 or 80% a victim. So anyway, I think if something got revealed that completely flipped the narrative on its head, the Democrats have dug in so hard on this being one of the worst things that have ever happened in the U.S., that there's no chance they'll backtrack, even if some bombshell drops. The Republicans are a little bit more divided on it. They do want to move on. But the panic over showing additional video... That, to me, is unreasonable. We already heard one side. Maybe we get to see a little bit of the other side, and we're free to draw our own conclusions. So I think the panic from this is overblown. But if you want to criticize Tucker for painting a completely different picture, that's fair. But if the main thing he wants to do is provide a clearer picture, then I don't really have a problem with that. I think the bigger problem for me would be saying nobody is allowed to see the additional footage at all. And some of the additional footage I hear was not allowed in some of the trials for some of these defendants. That I don't like either. I think everybody should have full access to video if it was recorded. So anyway, that wasn't a good day. But I think if you don't know anything about it, you would think it was worse than it was. Some of the additional video that's come out, I think, is beneficial to cut through the partisan politics. The narratives people paint, that's the issue. The video itself, that is not the issue. So anyway, that's just a little bit about what I think about this. You could go on and on about it. It's pretty much become so politicized that one side thinks one thing, no question. The other side thinks the other thing, no question. Sometimes one side or the other is right or wrong or partially right or wrong. I try to just tell you what I think. I don't care what side it falls on. But I just wanted to cover this since it has been in the news. I figured I'd do a little bit of commentary on it. But let's not that detract from the original story of James Buckley turning 100 years old. That to me I care about a lot more than the Tucker story. But anyway, let me know in the comments what do you think about either of these stories. Let me know your thoughts down below. On your way out, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching and I will see you on the next video.